Wait, what, you have to hit it? Yeah. Oh my god, it worked! <laughs> Normally when we make a video about a monitor, we are laser focused on the specs. How many nits? How many hertz? How many pixels? And the features are like, oh yeah, well it's got that, that's great, as long as I'm like, focused on my game here. Today is the opposite day. Samsung sponsored this video, and we're gonna be looking at this. Look at this! That's, that's Microsoft Office, but there, there's no computer plugged into it, and it's not an all-in-one. This is just a monitor, and like, the remote has a Netflix button. What are you? Let's find out. The thing is, this is a sponsored video, but this is a product that I have been asking for for so long that I couldn't jump on it fast enough. Or rather, not that I'm asking for this product, but asking why not this product? Monitors have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where the only difference between a big monitor and a small TV is that the monitor won't have that coaxial jack and it won't have smart TV features and all the like picture quality adjustments and stuff. Well, this, this finally addresses it. Watch this. Whoa! So it's like a tiny little smart TV. You can sit on your desk. It's adorable. That's pretty responsive. So we've got just a regular old MX Master 2S and a gaming keyboard of all things. And got, wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a giant mouse pointer. Kind of makes sense, cause like they might expect you to be kind of sitting on your bed. Like I could imagine this in a, in a dorm room, for example, where you've only got room for one display and really it needs to be a computer monitor but hey, you might want to watch Netflix once in a while. And then this is it. I'm using their remote access feature to use Office 365. The crazy thing here is that what remote access sounds like is I'm remoting into a PC, but that's not it. We are actually just running Word on the monitor. Like, we are gonna remote into a remote PC. All right, let's give it a shot. Do, 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 do. Pretty sweet. This is quite a bit more responsive because we're using the remote processing power of the computer and all that's happening is we are streaming the image back to our monitor. So, hello, this is working just fine. Fine, just fine. Oh, huh, that's freaking cool. Now, this is not a connection that you would game on or anything like that. Like it's, it's just not, yeah, you see that. It's just not really designed for that. But if you just needed to get some work done real quick, absolutely can do it. This is so kind of trippy. Like it feels wrong what we're doing right now. What else can it do? Here's another fun one. If you have a supported Samsung phone with the SmartThings app and tap view enabled, you basically just take it and go like this. Wait, what, you have to hit it? Yeah. Oh my God, it worked. <laughs> Check the mobile screen, start casting. <laughs> that is the truth. Rippiest thing. What was, why would they require that? Freaking fantastic. So like, like what? Got some secret shopper up in here. Wow, look at that. What's with these Linus Tech Tips guys and the baked in black bars? We should watch a good channel, like Short Circuit. So what, if I click like escape, does it? Oh my God, I'm like using my phone. That is like, that's nutty. You just like schwack it? The caveman school of like user experience. Just to clarify guys, this is not DeX. This is just casting from your mobile device to your display like you would do with your smart TV. It's just that you, <laughs> you just like, you, you whack it to get it working. It's like, ah, oh, why isn't this working? Ah, uh, everyone who thinks that way, Samsung, they got you covered. Of course, as much as Samsung would like everyone to have a Samsung phone, they know that not everyone does, and they've built in support for AirPlay. So let's go ahead and swipe down. Oh man, you gotta get to the corner. Screen mirroring, and boop. Look at that. Oh wow, it's actually more responsive too. <laughs> like, I, don't make, I don't make the experience here. I'm just having the experience. Look at that. That's actually really smooth. And it got the aspect ratio totally right. 
That's pretty cool. Is RTX 3000 Mobile any good? Short answer, yes. Long answer, it is way more complicated than that. I mean, obviously if I was doing any serious movie watching, like I would get a little soundbar for it or something like that, but it's pretty functional. It's like Samsung knew with the two five watt speakers that you probably weren't necessarily gonna be sitting like right in front of it. They get pretty loud. Now let's take over with this MacBook Air and boom, just like that. Oh, that's sweet. So hold on a second. Oh, okay, cool. I can use it as a separate display as well. Now this, we've actually gotten into something that like, I could see someone using every single day. You get back to your desk or you get back to your dorm room, whatever, you sit down with your MacBook, you get bloop, bloop, and that's it, extended display. I mean, it's over Wi-Fi, right guys? So, you know, motion is not gonna be the most fluid. But if you're just gonna have a document up there and refer back to it while you, you know, type away at your laptop, it's freaking awesome. I mean, yeah, one cable solution, it's great. Zero cable solution, man, I, yeah. Could see myself using that every day. On a PC, the process is a little less seamless, so you do actually have to go into PC screen sharing wireless mode. These are the kinds of features that like right now, it's like weird. But like, what, three years from now? Five years from now? You'll just be like, what, your monitor doesn't have that? Let's do the cable because honestly, my laptop battery is dead anyway. So this gives me 65 watts of charging. And of course, because we're on a wire now, there's no you know, high latency to contend with or choppiness or anything like that. It's, it's completely smooth. And, and of course, our peripherals that we connected are now connected to the laptop through the USB hub that's built into the monitor. It's trippy. We've used this thing half a dozen different ways and we've yet to connect an HDMI or a DisplayPort cable to it. Like, what? Oh, sorry, Linus. That's just me using Chromecast from my phone. Okay, so there's another one. Oh wow, that was really fast. So that's YouTube only, it's not yeah. actually a built-in Chromecast for other apps. Huh, that actually looks really good too. This looks about as good as AirPlay did. Maybe even better actually, that looks really good. How much is this thing? $3.99, that's funny. You know, with Samsung, it's one of those things where I might've said, oh, you know what, this feature set's probably like a $300, $400 premium over their other monitors, and we're gonna have to wait two or three years for it to trickle down into like the sensibly priced ones, but that's not, that's not unreasonable at all. Sorry, I'm just using my phone as a remote. You can do that on any Android phone with the Smart Things app. Huh, that is so much better than just like using the remote. I mentioned at the beginning that one of the things I'd like to see on monitors is all those adjustments that you have on TVs. And of course, it's got the full Samsung settings suite. So you've got all your different sound modes, picture modes, uh, game mode. There's an ultra wide game view mode. So this I could see being more applicable on something like a much larger TV. What it does effectively is it kind of like puts black bars so you have like a super ultra kind of widescreen gaming experience. They're not the focus, but it is worth talking through some speeds and feeds. It's not the brightest monitor ever, but it's 4K, 32 inches, 60 Hertz. And in terms of inputs, you've got two HDMI ports, one of which with arc. So like I said, you could hook a sound bar up to this thing. No problem. You've got on the 4K model, you've got the USB type C input. And then of course you've got the built-in USB hub. Now you can mount it with a VESA arm. So that's pretty cool, but you're not required to use that for the included stand and then you got your power on, that's basically it. Oh right, and we got this boy right here and an ambient light sensor so it knows how bright it should be, even if the answer is usually maximum. Also filmmaker. filmmaker, oh really? Filmmaker mode for watching your Netflix or whatever else? It makes so much sense. It's the M7 smart monitor and it's basically a smart TV, but a monitor. This video could have been like 15 seconds long if we had said it that way. <laughs> Thanks Samsung for sponsoring this video. Thanks you guys for watching it. I am really looking forward to where this tech goes in the future because I can absolutely see it right now. I'd love to see it like, you know, the latency down, a little bit more responsive, but this is a really cool concept that I have no idea why it took this long to come to market. But hey, we're there now. <laughs>